Hi there everyone, it's Jaakko here. Recently I did this uh, seaside rock kind of thing, these flat rocks, uh, which you can see where there's a, like a somewhere like coastal coastal side or somewhere by, by the sea and I was able to come up with these shapes and also put this kind of water service thing in here and I'd like to, to make a breakdown of this scene to to give you guys some uh, ideas how to come up with uh, something like this. So uh, this whole uh, scene is actually in my Gumroad, so you can grab that for a couple of dollars and and follow along this tutorial if you want. So um, I'm just gonna get here and uh, uh, load that. So so when you load the scene, uh, you see something like that. You probably get this uh, default cube, and and this isn't maybe best for our purpose. Of course, you can use this if you're working for a game engine, which uses this paradox occlusion style of a uh, thing but let's just uh, change this a little bit in, in this case so that we can see the height information how we can see this uh, previewed a little bit better so uh, you can do that if you go to materials and go to definitions and you can see this we have this physically metallic roughness and I'm gonna change this to tessellation so this is gonna allow us to to preview the height and um, I'm just gonna uh, change uh, maybe we can go and change the scale like something like uh, six so we are getting like this and also the scene um, I like to use uh, this plain high res for this kind of thing so if you use this uh, plain high res by the way it's good to remember that this already is a pretty high resolution uh, mesh that's loaded so if you go and use this tessellation factor it's better not to input too high values you, know, you can just crash your computer if you put too much you know um, geometry in there so uh, something like that might work and and we, we might be okay so you can actually change the scale a little bit uh, even more if you like but uh, maybe it's something that might be good for, for our purposes here so um, when we look take a look at this um, it's like um, not so uh, complicated actually you have like these basic things that I'm just creating the rock shape in here first uh, and come up with something like that and and with some cracks in there and so on and then I'm uh, doing some tiling operations here to to do that and then adding some large rocks and things like that and creating some masks in here which we are going to be able to use to to then uh, split our uh, albedo maps and uh, roughness and so on and then I have a this water water node in here which is just straight up this water level effect from from the substance designers I'm just using that because it's so damn cool and it works so fine so I mean so then we have these outputs in here uh, albedo uh, which is just this and then the normal and and roughness and uh, you can see the uh, ambient occlusion in here and then the height so um, something like that so um, let's get started and sort of uh, start to break this down how it works so I started first to, to create basically a one rock so uh, I thought that it's mm, just makes sense that I'm just making one rock and then maybe using some uh, tools to to sort of uh, warp this so uh, what I did was I used this polygon 2 and I just uh, put some uh, maybe five sides in here and also adjust the things like the scale and and curve the curve means um, this roundness on on this so so if you adjust this you can see that it rounds those um, it, it looks more or not so angular and actually it's really nice that you can see it it, it happens in real time here so that if you adjust this you can you can basically come back in here and do, do the adjusting so if you want more angular shapes then actually this does and now we get these nice uh, corners here which is actually might be even better than than what I was doing with this so, so um, something like that you, you can just uh, adjust this to your liking and then uh, what this was uh, I just input this to this blend what I have in here so I'm actually blending this shape with uh, purring noise and doing some uh, transformation to it. So actually what this was, why I did this was is that I'm going to be able to rotate this and then come up with another shape. So this could be, we could input this to uh, perhaps to another 
basically I mean uh, we could actually expose these rotation parameters so what this does is that that it just allows us to to randomize this shape so we could easily very easily create a unique rocks by by just uh, duplicating this or, or creating a graph which allows that so in again just expose this rotation value and and you've got the slider which allows us to to, to get another base another base shape for your rocks uh, this is actually this tip is something that I pick up from algorithmic videos so I'm gonna link that in the video so so you can just uh, check that video as well it's pretty cool so check that out as well so then um, what I've got is I use slope blur grayscale and this is really cool note it allows us to to come up with these really um, cool shapes like that you can use this node for things like uh, making some uh, drips for some rust effects or some kind of like a organic effects like that and then I'm just using this fractal some base to drive that so uh, we are coming from this one we're getting this one it looks already like a rock basically we're just having a couple of nodes and you're, you're kidding so far it's it's amazing I think so then uh, again I'm using a uh, blend so I'm blending the original the this and and that just gives us a little bit more control and then uh, I'm using levels node I'm wondering why I, yeah this levels node I'm just uh, uh, adjusting the middle uh, the middle point here to give it more uh, because we are sort of not seeing everything here so this gives us more more things basically to to see and then I'm uh, coming here I'm using this plasma and warp I'm using the same the same transparency to any node from the Perlin noise to to drive this warp and then uh, using again levels node in here and uh, blending it together so we are coming up with this and then again I'm um, adding some little detail with this B BMW BNW not a BMW um, spots uh, two uh, three and um, using some levels adjustments in here and then just uh, adding it in there so we are getting a little bit so this kind of texture on those gradients so we are coming from this one we are coming up with this kind of a result in here and then uh, I'm using levels here and um, I'm uh, blending then these cracks which I'm creating here so the cracks are actually something that are not still I'm not like super satisfied so so if you download this graph you can just uh, uh, maybe come up with better better cracks but this is something that may give you some ideas how you could approach doing things something like that so so I've got cells uh, 4 in here and then I've got transformation uh, 2d in here so I'm going to rotating that I'm using histogram scan here to sort of uh, uh, select some of the values so I'm uh, just uh, this is the whole thing so I'm actually yeah just selecting position here for for something like that so you can just uh, grab the position slider here and should maybe select the contrast to to come up with different the results so so something like that I did and then uh, use transformation 2d to rotate it and then blend them together so beginning something like that and again I'm using warp uh, just to do, uh, grab grab some uh, crunch maps in here and driving the warp with those uh, to to give it give it this kind of a, like jacked edge thing and then I'm just using a edge detect and really small small edge with values in here and small roundness values in here to, to come up with uh, something like that this isn't like super realistic and super perfect but uh, for for something like that it may be maybe passable so then uh, blending it together and what I'm doing just here is that uh, I'm masking this so I'm actually using these levels to 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 create a, the proper mask so that uh, these cracks appear only on the rocks so that was the idea that I'm creating basically one rock in here and then I'm uh, tiling it so the real uh, the real magic happens with this uh, tile random node in here so with this uh, you basically one of the important parameters is the scale so you just have to uh, find the right scale for your uh, tile random otherwise it, it won't work so you can actually adjust this and get smaller rocks or bigger rocks if you like um, get these sort of islands and, and so on and you can just uh, 
to make them bigger and it just they they blend really nicely together like that and you can adjust many settings and and you can uh, adjust this blending mode if you do this add sub then it sort of melts them together like that and this might be something that you're after or or if you just use this uh, max value then you get uh, these nice nice uh, sort of uh, grooves uh, between those rocks and so so this tile random is absolutely just brilliant and, and everything you do with this is normally a uh, tile pose of completely tiling and if you want to uh, preview your tiling you just go to materials and edit and then just go like a uh, tiling in here so you can see how it how it works if with different values so maybe we could we could uh, put a little bit tiling here so we can see that how how it repeats something like that uh, or maybe just uh, drop it to one so that we can see the details a little bit better so what I also did here is that then I use another tile random based on the same uh, same uh, nodes basically so this is just uh, basically the same thing uh, tiled differently tiled way more more and what I'm doing with this is that I'm using this to subtract from from this shape so I'm reacting this and we can see that we are like having these these shapes like that and then if we that you can see that we have these uh, uh, grooves in here now and what this does it gives us a little bit this nice service detail so why just uh, why should we create a, a scrap from from the scratch because we can just reuse this uh, shape and come up with this and this should be more efficient way to work than just create from scratch so I just uh, thought maybe we could just try to drop in some little service detail using that what I'm doing then is that I just uh, use this histogram select to sort of uh, select these gray areas, these these sort of uh, uh, slopes in here, and I want to put some detail on the slopes. So what I did was that I just used this histogram select node to select those values from the grayscale, and then then used the warp to uh, to give this kind of a effect. That I've used the creased in this case might be might be better that. There might be better notes for this, but for for time being, I'm just uh, satisfied with this uh, warp uh, for now. And then um, I'm just blending them together, and then uh, blending these back to the back to the to main graph like that. So we are getting now those those sort of uh, grooves in those um, slope slope areas, and not not everywhere, else, not anywhere else. And then we have a bunch of blend snows that are not in use, uh, something that I forgot there. I, I was playing with some different settings here, I suppose, and I just forgot them there, so never mind about those. So then what I did was that I created the large rocks and small pebbles, and I used one Berlin noise here for driving both of these effects. So for the large rocks, I used basic shape in here and just used the bell, bell shape in here. and. And then I use warp and just uh, drive this warp with the purling noise to to change the overall shape like that. And then uh, I use levels to uh, adjust, give it more uh, more uh, area, basically more area to work with. So we are going to be able to adjust this more like that. And then I use this wonderful slope blur grayscale to to give it something that looks like that and just driving it with the burning so probably we could be able to just drag it from here and maybe put the transformation 2d node in here to adjust it but um, something like that just works and you can i'm just going to leave it in here so you can change the scale of this one and then uh we have this tile random and this is just uh, splattering them all around like that and i use these levels to adjust uh their uh, visibility more a little bit so that we're getting more uh, height or something like that but you can adjust the uh, values of course here to you how you like so something like that and then the small bevels are basically the same thing with little different values i'm just using warp in here and directional warp in here to do even more uh, uh warp that and uh then use transmission 2d in order to, to sort of change the shape a little bit to look it like that and then used uh, time random to get like really many of them and again levels so so what I'm doing here is then just uh, I'm blending these together like that and so here we have putting the small rocks in there and then the large large ones in here and, and we are sort of building our height in that way 
so um, basically this was all this is our finalized height map in here so we can see it's it's actually not that complicated so this height just comes from here and this is sort of a sort of the cornerstone of our craft so if we get this far if you're going to be able to to build height map which looks this good or well <laughs> probably you can do better than me but but anyway if you if you're going to be able to come up to this point then rest is just uh, just uh, easy 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 thing of uh, finding out the values and finding out the albedo values and and putting some normal detail in there and then mixing it up and you're pretty much done with that so so then yes we can see that um, I was able to come up with some rock masks so uh, I'm just taking these values from here I'm adjusting the levels and and uh, I think I am inverting that and then uh, continuing here with levels adjustments blending in more detail in there uh, the rocks and everything like that and and now we are going to be able to come up with this rock mask so what this is that it separates the rocks from that uh, the other area the, the ground or the ground plane or something like that so then i'm going to be able to use this rock mask for all kinds of things for example uh starting to build the albedo so if we take a look in here what i'm doing is i'm using grunge map in here and i'm using gradient map to map some crazy values in there and then using a HSL, the hue, saturation, lightness. So what this does, it gives us this basic rock texture and I'm also sampling that in the roughness in here. So then what I did was I added this Dirt 4 generator here and, and put this gradient map in here and map some values basically, some color values here. So we are getting this sort of a terrain effect, something could be like some moss or something like that. And then uh, again, uh, taking the same uh, generator and and getting some putting some levels in here and blending them with with this uh, mask, and then uh, getting getting here and uh, blending more to get the roughness in here. So we're just uh, basically blending some uh, more values again coming from from this node. So we're reusing those generators to 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 come up with different effects, and then also taking this and blending it to the normal so uh, we are getting the normal like that so we're just taking the height information here and we're basing we're getting the normal map this way and and again blending some uh, micro details there that way so again the albedo is is very easy so we're just uh, taking this rock texture from here and then we are using this as a mask and separating the the ground the terrain from the rock by doing this so we're just using the blend node and using this uh, opacity mask from from here we, which we did here this rock mask thing I'm just actually naming it so that actually this is the actual rock mask with a little bit of levels adjustment but never mind about that so um, we are getting the albedo here so it's just uh, uh, blending in just a little bit putting a little bit AO in here so uh, it just gives us a little bit of like uh, richness in there so it, you're not really supposed to put AO in your uh, albedo maps but uh, just a, a tiny tiny little bit this might be way too much but uh, the, you guys can adjust it if you like and also what I did was here is then uh, I created a curvature map so we have this curvature smooth uh, node which gives us really nice uh, curvature so I'm just taking the curvature from the ambient occlusion here and then uh, I'm just uh, adjusting, putting some really wild levels adjustments in there and putting the gradient map into getting this and then just blending it there so we are getting a little bit more uh, some interesting uh, edges happening here so maybe the edges are worn off some something like that and again this is not really exactly that you're really supposed to do like uh, in the old time game engines and old time game models you see this that people hand paint those kind of details to, to give those edges more pop and things like that when when we were not do, do dealing with the PBR when we we're just dealing with a, a legacy shaders which didn't work that well with uh, every lighting environment but but here you can still sort of give it a little bit um, sort of uh, something more interesting than just a flat uh, flat surface that if, if we just uh, didn't do that then it would look like a something more like this and, and that might be might be more realistic but uh, it's it's a matter of your taste and there's no like 
still there isn't like super hard uh, rules that you should never do something like that you can uh, adjust and you can make uh, things to if it looks good in every lighting environment then i think you're doing a good job so that's at least my model so uh, i think i actually forgot to mention about the ao so the ao is actually this 8b ao which is a really really fantastic uh, high quality node which gives uh, just brilliant results i mean this is something that is being just wildly improved in substance designers so definitely hbao is uh, one way to go so i'm just taking height mapping here and then using this hbao to come up with a pretty damn good uh, ambient occlusion and then again i drive that put it into diffuse and uh, and so on so um then uh, what's really happening here is that we have this uh, effect uh, this water level node which comes with substance designer and i really don't know why this was included but i mean it's it's really damn cool i think this is just production ready basically so uh when you're dealing with uh nodes like material nodes like that you can um hit like uh you can press like number one you can get so that you can see those wires and you can just hit number three to get these wires like that so what this is that now we see that we have material output in here and this is really cool if you want to switch really quickly you can just like uh drag one node you can just basically drag one line from here and what happens is that it connects automatically so it's very fast way it works so if you're dealing with this material notice you have to draw all the lines so it's so i like to to keep it in the material mode like that so but but if you see we, the water level node it takes like base color normal roughness height and ambient occlusion and and this does automatically the water level and all, all the settings so you can see that you have like a, you, you can set the channel so you so if we're working with ppi you just have to enable the base color and roughness and those things and and then what it does it just automatically adjusts the water level so we can adjust that and we can see just uh, how it just <laughs> it's just a brilliant it, it works automatically like that and it uh, adjusts uh, all those maps those height maps and uh, roughness maps and color maps and you have so many cool parameters like water darkness and edge wetness that you can adjust how how wet those edges are going to be and so on and and you have even like some frost frost value so you can just play around with this uh, to see what you can come out but it's just i think it's so cool like you can see that it just looks like a so real like you can see that those rocks are like under the under the water there and it's uh no matter from which angle you look it just looks so realistic it's uh it's a fun note so i i, I mean that i could uh probably come up with uh, something like that it just worked super hard to create this but i mean why just not to, not to use it it's, it's, it's made to be used i suppose so so i did that so we can actually check how this works with iray renderers so i'm just gonna go here and click this render and select this iray and you can see that by default it's just super flat and that isn't the what what we're after so i'm gonna go to materials i'm gonna edit so so the iRay, uh, the renderer has different material settings. So you have to come here and, and again as a scale like so. I'm going to put like number six in here. So we're getting these. And now you can see that with iRay render, you're getting these shadows and, and this super realistic uh, looking shading. And this is just uh, brilliant, I think. Uh, so if you come here, you have these environment maps and we can try different ones. So I think maybe this one might be really nice. So you get these this sort of effect so again you have values like this tiling so if we increase this we can get an idea how this is gonna tile and and again look from different angles and sort of see that how this might work and what kind of values might work for us again it's so insanely cool that we can get uh, this iray level sort of a, a rendering and we can just go to these nodes and we can adjust this and see the effect what our adjustments do to the final rendering just by doing nothing because it will automatically render so if we adjust the water level here for example we can come up with different water level effects and we're going to be able to see that in the iray render window in real time it's just uh, crazy insanely cool i think 
So anyway, this was Yakko. I hope you guys enjoyed. So if you like this video, just please hit the like. And if you dislike the video, well, you can press the other button as well. So please subscribe if you're interested of uh, having more of these tutorials in the future. So I hope to see you guys around. Please leave a comment if you have something to ask. So yeah, good to see you guys. And this is Yakko. Goodbye.